There is a calling from my heart for the sea and that's one of the reasons I have been painting ocean, water, sea, waves, etc. for quite some time. Hi guys, I am Dhritika Ranath, an artist, instructor, mother, brand owner of Vibrant Parcels where we manufacture handmade sketchbook, artist grade paints and much more. I not only love to play with water but also give detailed lessons on various platforms like Skillshare, YouTube and even on my own website www.vibrantparcels.com. If you are someone who is in love with water and how to paint them, I have recently released a class which is Voyager to the sea and here you are going to learn 15 different watercolor seascape paintings. If you are someone who want detailed lessons you can always uh, go ahead and uh, watch my videos. I have already given the link below and let's start out with our uh, painting now. It's from the beginning we are going ahead and drawing the mountain. It's at 2x speed so if you anytime want to reduce the speed please go ahead and reduce the speed and then start with your painting. I have made a horizon line and in and around the horizon line there is a set of hills or you can say there are mountains. Uh, usually these are smaller hills and they look amazing. I have been in love with destinations like Mauritius etc where hill, sea as well as your land meets and this looks as a very very interesting concept to me altogether and nature has everything initially i was fascinated with this concept and now when i look at it and i paint it it's something that is super beautiful super amazing uh, one of the reasons for me going to goa almost every year is because i can see those beautiful rocky hills and then they just touch the sea along with the land beaches etc which makes the whole experience so much more fulfilling Going ahead and adding some foreground rocky terrain and then we are going to create a big wave in the foreground. The foreground is going to be very interesting and we are going to focus a lot on the foreground. Having said that, even on the background, the rocks would be not as, um, I would say, there will not be a lot of details compared to the foreground rocks which we are going to do. I love to create my own colors. As I always say, it is usually burnt sienna plus ultramarine. If you are someone who is new to watercolors, I would request you to use some lighter brown like burnt sienna and some dark brown like um, your um, uh, sepia or any of the Van Dyke brown or darker brown shades which are available with you. For watercolors, paper is very important. I am using my 200 GSM 100% cotton Fabriano paper which is there in my sketchbook and this is a quick sketch which I am doing and that's one of the reasons I have not gone ahead with any 300 GSM paper. I love to do these quick sketches in my sketchbook. They are not the final final sketches which I want to send out or sell to anyone. It's more of practice sessions and I love to actually share all my practice sessions with you guys. It's another simple relaxing day for me and I it is really hot in this part of India. I stay in Kolkata and uh, because of the heat that we have over here i am only thinking about beaches going to sea and just enjoying my time over there going with uh, my ultramarine for the sky as i did tell you and now it is a flat wash which i have done towards the top area along with it i am going ahead and adding some amount of my naples yellow and burnt sienna for the bottom area of the uh, beach uh, part. It is mainly that my sand as well as uh, the compost blue. This can be compost blue or cobalt green or any of the colors that's available with you. If you don't have this particular shade in place with you, you can also go ahead with Taylor blue and some amount of darker value of green. It can be forest green, Vendike green to create a tailor green of your choice and mix a bit of white in it to create a similar kind of shade that you are seeing me applying over here. In case you want detailed lessons of how to create these colors etc you can always go ahead and follow my class on Skillshare Voyage into the Sea and it has mostly all these colors, shades etc which we are using in this painting. Many of you might not be really happy with what you see over here. 
therefore it's always well said never judge the book by its cover always go ahead and read the book rather than just judging it by its cover at this moment we really don't know how this painting is going to turn out i'm just applying a few colors randomly and then i will see how i work on other layers now layers is all about glazing glazing is a very very important technique which you all might have learned earlier as well as if we continue to work on it you will understand that we are going to go ahead with another layer on top of the blues for the ocean the browns that we have added for um, our beach area and more i think the paper has lost a bit of its sizing because of the fact that i have kept this sketchbook long unused for almost more than 2 years and um, i have recently started again using this sketchbook having said that it really doesn't matter when it is all about just um, sketching or trying your sketchbook or just um, practicing it really doesn't matter what you are working on of course a good paper is important that's one of the reasons i am using this paper dressed i guess a bit here and there is good it has not lost a lot on its sizing like few of the spaces places i just feel that it could have been a bit better going ahead and adding some of my darker values in some of the areas and trying to create wave like structures adding some clear water to just uh, clear out some space for creating the splashing waves and then i guess um, we will be done with our layer 1 for the water area let it dry and concentrate on the other parts which is majorly my shoreline as well as continue to work on the rocks rocks is something that i really want to work on and you will see how i continue to work on the rock currently adding some of my darker values of green into the water area and this water area is very interesting for me why i say i build it up with the uh, various colors slowly and steadily i'm not hurrying up in the process though you are seeing it as at a two x speed that's one of the reasons you might feel that it is a bit more faster than what it should have been you can always go ahead adjust the speed wherever you need it is needed and if you are painting along with me please do tag me on instagram as watercolor.illustration.letter i wait do love to share back all you paint from my videos on my uh, stories and absolutely in love with whatever you paint going ahead and mixing some of my burnt sienna with my ultramarine to create the colors at this moment you frankly cannot understand how the whole painting is going to turn up believe me or not it is something that i have learned over the years that do not leave a painting midway at this moment you will see that the whole painting will turn up as you want and we need to continue working on a painting rather than leaving it um, midway if you are even not very satisfied with the painting it's okay let it be go ahead and complete it i'm using my burnt sienna and a mix of a bit of my ultramarine to create some of the darker and lighter values for uh, the hilly areas and once i have covered the white spaces it's time to work on the shoreline the shore is something that's very very interesting what happens in this area is we have to go ahead and create a lot of shadows and this shadow is very interesting whenever i work on shadows it's really makes me so happy it um, comes with the fact that actually i am creating waves and i can start feeling the waves are there i can see the white of the paper shining through though i was not really happy with the amount of white that i might have left at this stage that's one of the reasons i would be using my opaque white watercolor for creating the waves you can also go ahead and do that it's a easier way to work on your waves I can also use my uh, masking fluid which I have not used at this stage. We will be working on more advanced uh, uh watercapes or uh, seascapes in future and you will see how I use my masking fluid to my advantage. 
adding some of my darker values here and there and once I have added the darker values I think it's time to let your paper dry off before you start working on your um, rocks. Rocks is a very very important aspect of this whole painting. Rocks is something that I want to really concentrate on and I have mixed again my ultramarine with some of my burnt sienna to create the darker values as you see over here. I am just going with the tip of the same brush. This is my Raphael size 0 by 3 brush. As you know that I don't um, go ahead and change my brushes regularly but I like to keep one brush which can be used for any kind of painting and this is a brush which I have seen can be used uh, thoroughly for any kind of painting of your choice. It can be a smaller painting, it can be a bigger painting, it does support all kind of paintings and that's one of the reasons I continue to work uh, with this brush uh, for sure and I am in love with the tip that I get uh, in this one. It's uh, so nice that you can create thinner lines very very easily and I continue to just break a few of the areas to create rock like structures and some of the areas are there in the darker value and some of the areas are there in the lighter value. I will again mix some of my darker value of brown and add the colors in the desired places. The bottom part of this rocks are more into the shadow areas. That's one of the reasons you will see they being more darker and those areas being more darker than the ones that you have um, seen earlier. Towards the top which are more lighter in values. Continue to create it uh, as we need to add more and more lines and some dots here and there. This is more of glazing technique that you might see me using very often. Now my base layer has already dried off. I'm going with a real light value over it and then creating more layers on top of it to show the rocky terrain. This is usually seen very often in many of your uh, other um, paintings too where you can see that the rock-like structure is present with the help of your uh, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4 we created. You can go on adding more and more layers though I'm not a person who is in love with creating a lot of layers. I usually love to complete my paintings within two to three layers and here I might go ahead with one more darker value as I progress to just show that uh, the rocks look more darker towards the bottom. As your water, corals, etc, everything is concentrated there and when your water hits the rock, you will find some amount of algae, etc. The water will be cutting through your rock, all of it put together, the areas would be more darker. It's more realism that I like to add at this stage into my painting. Though watercolor is free flowing and you will not see a lot, a lot of realism into it, but still a bit of it can always help and it can bring your painting come to life. The continuous painting which we are doing is more of an iterative process and this iterative process uh, will continue to work um, as we even work on the waters. We are going to create some wave-like structure and I'm going to create some lines in this case. There will be small line, there will be thin line, there will be big line, all sorts of lines that you can think of I would be adding over here and creating a wave-like structure. I am blending the colors, washing my brush at regular intervals, again picking up some new colors and adding some smaller lines. 
Now, when you create wave-like structure, it's important to practically go ahead and keep uh, adding smaller and thicker and bigger lines. Some of the spaces would be more thick, some of the spaces would be more uh, thin. Uh, you have to always alter the brush strokes, etc. And that's one of the reasons you will always see me sometimes adding some uh, water and sometimes working with more pigmented colors. Pigments are great, but uh, do understand that always pigments can't play a huge role in your painting. And it's important to have a better outcome only when you continue to work and understand where exactly what kind of a technique can help you. At this stage, we are working wet on dry, whereas when we started out, it was more of wet on wet. The paper is 200 GSM and it does get uh, dried up very quickly. That's one of the reasons wet on dry is a better technique suited in this kind of a paper rather than when you are going ahead and working on a 300 GSM, 600 or 800 GSM. At that moment, I would say that your... Uh, uh, better work would be uh, more to do with a wet on wet technique. Though I am someone who is in love with both the techniques, I have worked wet on wet, wet on dry, both kinds of techniques and um, both of them have worked wonders for me. You need to learn both and uh, I would say I continue to use both of them to my advantage. I am using some of my white um, uh, opaque watercolor and I'm adding it. This is from PH Martin and I'm using their PH Martin white to create wave-like structures. Some of the areas I'm going ahead and adding some of my white. Though I'm not very happy with my brush, I think I have to go ahead and uh, use either a thicker brush or else uh, just work with my first brush uh, that I was working with. I prefer to switch it at some point uh, though it can create way more thinner lines what I did um, actually uh, do initially so it's okay I, I, you can even continue with this I'm not a person who is thinking more in the way of um, brushes and colors you can always create your colors you can always have change of your brushes but paper is the, the most important aspect in watercolor when you think about uh, painting with it never never uh, just uh, do a let go of on your paper it's very important to continue working on a good paper okay i guess uh, now we are almost done with the whites of uh, the wave that we had to create there are a few more darker values which are more like shadow areas I will create the shadows of the wave again and then just blend it with the background colors. Once my waves are done, I can see that this whole painting is turning up uh, very well. You have to let the paper dry off and then only have a look at it. I use my fingers very often when it's all about uh, painting with watercolors. It's okay to let your fingers also dance and do some kind of a painting. At this stage, you are almost done. Step back, relax and have a look at your painting. I am pretty sure about it. You are already in love with it. If you like this painting, do give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to my channel and share it back on any social media where you are there. Either it be Instagram, Facebook, etc. I would love to share back even on my stories. Happy painting. See you again next week.